Have you ever been playing a song on the drums, whether you're playing with a recording or with a band, and you realize you're just struggling to really listen to what's going on around you? You start to wonder if maybe you just have a bad ear or you just lack that musical skill that all the great musicians seem to have. But you know that you need to listen well if you're really going to improvise and play musically and have fun on the drums. How do we actually listen in real time as we're playing the drums and do it well? This is what we're uncovering today. This is a learned skill that you can learn, you can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. This is a channel that's all about giving you the core skills that really matter that help you know your next step and get results fast. And speaking of serious progress, if you're having trouble freeing your right foot from your right hand, or you wanna keep time with your left foot, or you wanna be able to improvise between the kick and the snare while you're playing, whether that's rock or even jazz, I've got the perfect resource for you. It's totally free. It's called the three-part practice routine, Know What to Practice. This guide is awesome for a lot of reasons. It's been the most popular guide on the channel. It's helped out thousands of drummers. And probably the most helpful part of this guide is the coordination section because we have all these specific exercises that teach you detailed interplay between your feet, teaches you how to play certain patterns with your hands over foot patterns so that you can build that independence between hands and feet. And you can free your right foot from your right hand so that you can nail kick patterns the way you've always wanted to. And you even learn how to improvise in a jazz context and even a Latin context. Honestly, we cover everything in this guide. It's detailed, yet it's simple and it's step by step. And it's three parts, hand technique, coordination, and music, which is very cool, extremely helpful, extremely practical and actionable. You can be a total beginner drummer and make a lot of progress and work your way toward pro level drumming simply through this guide. So it's helped out a whole bunch of non-glamorous drummers before you. Join their ranks, make some progress, take action, go download the guide. It's a total no-brainer because it's free. All right, let's get on with today's lesson. So why is it that it's always so much easier to listen well when we're just sitting there and listening to music or maybe we've got headphones on and we're listening, but then when we're actually playing, when we're actually playing our drums and maybe we're playing along to a recording and we're trying to listen to what's going on on the recording or we're rehearsing or jamming with our band or playing a gig, why is it that it's so much harder to really hear what's going on around us while we're playing? Well, I think most of the time it's because we're busy worrying about our own playing. We're, we're busy worrying about what we're playing, making sure it sounds good, keeping good time. There's a lot going on. And so in a way, we're maxing out our, our CPU, CPU, our central processing unit of our brain, where we're just running out of brain power because we've got so many things to think about. And so it's hard to focus our ear on listening beyond us as we're playing. Or maybe it's as simple as we haven't trained our ear. Our ear just doesn't know what to listen for. Or maybe we're a little nervous or a little anxious and so we're just busy making sure that we sound good and making sure we're holding things together and so we're unable to actually let our ear go beyond that because we're, we're nervous. And so those are, those are just a few common reasons why this happens and we're gonna address all of this today and talk about how to train your ear, how to get better at listening, and also how to broaden that CPU, broaden your brain's ability to process more so that you can do all these things at once and really be a musical creative drummer. Because honestly, in order to create, in order to improvise, in order to play stuff that sounds really good and have fun doing it, you've gotta be able to listen well. A lot of times that's, there's a gap between that technical skill that many of us develop and that next level that seems to be the difference between a pro drummer and an amateur drummer. And so if you're at that stage where you're feeling like, you know, I've, I've practiced the exercises, I've, I've worked this stuff, but I just have a hard time having fun creating and improvising. I feel like there's a barrier there somewhere and I don't know where it is and I don't know how to move past it. If that's where you're at, this lesson is definitely for you because your next phase to move into could very well be that listening phase for when you can learn to listen, and get comfortable, build more comfort, and get to where you can process more at once, that might be your gateway into that creative freedom you've always wanted. So this is gonna be a fun lesson, let's dig into this. The first thing I want you to do, if you haven't done this already, is put on a pair of headphones and listen to some of your favorite songs through headphones so that you're hearing them in detail. Now the cool thing these days, streaming music is like actually a high, a high quality audio thing. You know, used to, if you streamed music online, it was like an MP3 or some low quality. And so it wasn't the same as listening to a CD. 
But now you can actually get CD quality audio, at least from Apple Music. And I think there's some other more niche streaming services out there that offer that. But Apple Music is the big mainstream one where you can actually get lossless audio right now, which means as you're listening, you are hearing what the producer heard. You're, you're hearing it as though you're listening to a CD, which is the highest quality form of digital audio that we've got pretty much. And so this is a really cool way to set yourself up for success in the first place by putting good headphones on so that you know you're going to hear stuff, you're going to immerse yourself in it, and then have some high quality audio playing. Now, if you're a Spotify person, that's fine. I've used Spotify for years, and so that's, that's still good quality. It's not quite lossless, uh, at least not as of the making of this video, but it's still good. So it's not a big deal. Uh, it doesn't have to be lossless, but it, find some good quality audio wherever you like to stream your music. Most importantly, put on headphones, sit down, get comfortable, and listen to your favorite songs that way. Now, what you want to get comfortable doing is picking out the different things that are going on in the recording. So depending on what genre you're listening to, this is going to be totally different song to song. And so you might be listening for electric guitars that are panned different places in the stereo field. You might be listening for an acoustic guitar that's over here. You might be listening to the drums and noticing, okay, all the drums are off this way, or maybe the kick and snare are right here, but the toms are there. And maybe you hear the hi-hat off this way or off this way. That, those are the kind of things you want to listen for, and headphones make it easy to do that because you're immersed in that stereo field and you can very easily pinpoint where each thing is. And most recordings are going to be mixed in such a way that you can do that. Now, my push for Apple Music, and actually why I switched recently, um, this is not an uh, Apple Music official endorsement. Apple Music would not care whether or not I endorse them anyways. <laughs> but you can sign up for the, the three-month free trial. You can't listen to anything on Apple Music without having an, an account unlike Spotify where you can have a free account. But go sign up for the free trial, three months free, listen to Apple Music, give it a try because they have a really cool feature called spatial audio, Dolby Atmos spatial audio. And some tracks have been mixed in this way. You can go find the, the category, the, the playlist of them there in the app. But what this is, is it's this form of mixing where things are not just placed on the stereo field, but they're also placed up and down. So it's kind of like you're listening through headphones, but you're hearing things in surround because you're hearing things in all these different spots. Very cool technology. I think it's something that I've, deep down inside, I've waited for for a long time. When I was in high school, I thought, man, it'd be so cool if I could hear things bigger. Like if things were bigger rather than just being right here. And that's what we're starting to get into now, which is really cool. If you listen to new pop music, like the new Coldplay record, um, a, lot of, a lot of new stuff coming out is being mixed this way. And so you can listen to it this way, where it literally it's like you're immersed in it and you hear everything going on all around you. A lot of classical records, jazz records, movie soundtracks have been remixed in this way. So you can go find old recordings, like Beatles recordings, some Marvin Gaye stuff, all sorts of old records that have now been remixed in this way. And so you can hear them in a lot more detail than you could before. And so what's very cool is when you listen to a Beatles recording, you distinctly hear where each instrument is. Now, their instrumentations were pretty simple to begin with, which makes, it, makes them an easy option to listen to and try to pick out parts. But in spatial audio, everything has more space. And so you'll actually feel like you're sitting in the room, so you hear that, oh, well, there's Ringo's drums. Okay, there's the guitar, there's the vocals. Everything has its space. And so I say all that to say, getting all nerdy here, I say all that to say, this makes it very easy to discern the different things going on in a mix, this, this whole spatial audio thing. Even if it's not in spatial audio, if it's good quality, then you can learn to distinguish and discern the different pieces going on in a track. And so just find a couple of favorite songs and sit there and listen and see how many things you can pick out. Notice where the drums are, where the bass is, and how each of these things sounds because you're actually training your ear here. You're, you're training your ear to critically listen. That's what we wanna do. We wanna critically listen so that we're not just passively listening. We're not just sitting back and enjoying the music, which we do wanna do but we're actually looking for things. We're actually looking for details, like what is something going on that maybe I haven't noticed before that I can pick out this time, where you're hearing something new every time you listen to that favorite recording. And ultimately that gives you a much deeper enjoyment of music, I think, which is very cool, very rewarding. Now, if you're having trouble with this, here's something really cool you can do. This moves us away from the high quality audio, but if you go into YouTube, you never know what you're gonna get with YouTube audio, but Go to the, if whether or not you're a John Mayer fan, I'm a big fan of John Mayer's Live in LA record that he put out in 2007, I think. Either way, it's a live record, a live acoustic record. That doesn't mean that they're all playing acoustic instruments, but it was recorded by the people on stage live in real time. There's no electronic programming, there's no drum loops, there's no tracks, things like that. It's all being produced by the musicians on stage in real time. 
that's cool because you can go listen to it and as you're watching the performance, as you're watching them on a stage performing, you're hearing everything they're playing and you can visually see who's playing what. And so you hear a guitar thing going on and you see whether or not John Mayer's playing that or whether the other guitar player's playing that. There's even a track where there's two bass players playing at once. And you might not notice that when you're just listening to the record, but when you see, oh, okay, he's playing those little riffs, he's holding down the main bass lines, it all starts to make more sense because you have visual references, visual cues to make sense of what you're hearing. That can be really helpful early on. Like if you're new to this and you're trying to train your ears for the first time and you're trying to discern different instruments and hear what's going on, being able to see what's happening and then hear it also helps so much in making sense of things. Now, you don't have to just do this with a John Mayer record. That's one of my favorite go-tos. There's so many acoustic albums out there, or acoustic bands, acoustic concerts, even classical orchestral concerts. What's really cool is if you find like a string quartet or just like a, an orchestra playing something and you watch it and you listen to it, you see who's playing and you see what's creating the sounds that you're hearing. And so you're able to pick out individual parts much more easily than you would if you weren't also seeing it. And so this is something cool you could do with a group like Nickel Creek. If you ever listen to Nickel Creek, they're really cool, um, I guess like pop, bluegrass, I forget exactly what genre they're called. Very cool stuff. Just a few acoustic instruments, it's all very raw, natural acoustic, but when you see what they're playing, that helps you make more sense of what you're hearing, especially if you're not familiar, familiar with the genre. But, okay, let's get to the core of this because you might be like, Steven, this is, this is all detailed and nerdy and all, all good and fun and stuff, but what about when all this falls apart while I'm playing the drums? What if I've trained my ear? What if I've played bass, guitar, and I've played piano, and what if I come from a musical background and I know I have a good ear, I know I've trained my ear, but when I'm playing the drums, I just struggle to actually listen and I just kind of feel panicked and frustrated. I hear this a lot and I've been there. Um, I came from a piano background and I was playing music before I played the drums and so I always felt like I had pretty much trained my ear somewhat. I felt like I had a decent ear even outside of the drums, but I was encountering that same thing where as I was playing the drums, I just felt unable to listen. I felt like I didn't have that mental space like we were talking about earlier. Well, the secret is that you have to develop enough comfort on the kit so that you're able to devote more attention to listening rather than just your own playing. Now, I would, I would say that comfort and coordination are synonymous when we're talking drums. In order to feel comfortable, you've gotta have some coordination. And by building coordination, you're actually building comfort. And so back to what we were talking about earlier, if you want to expand your CPU, expand your, your brain's capability to process a lot at once, you have to be broadening that coordination so that you become more comfortable and confident in your playing so that then you can relax a little bit and actually listen to what's going on beyond your drums. Now, I believe that the best way to do this isn't just by practicing coordination exercises, though that's great. Ultimately, you've got to log time on the kit. You've got to spend time playing songs, learning songs, just jamming, just playing. Spend time with your instrument, get to know your instrument, become comfortable in the instrument. These things take time. This is something that I talked about in a recent video where we talked about the, the secret mindset shift that has to happen in order to build coordination. So we dig into this in more depth in that recent lesson. I'll link it below. But basically what we want to do to build coordination is just log more time on the kit because coordination involves building new pathways in the brain. And so it's not just practicing difficult things that we want to do, that we want to practice simple things and some difficult things, but mostly simple things over and over again so that we clear those pathways so that they're so clear and so easily traveled that we can then focus on something else. So that whatever grooves, whatever things on the kit, whatever songs become so second nature that as we're playing them, we're not worrying about what we're playing. We're not worrying about whether or not the right foot's gonna play the right kick pattern because we just know it because we've practiced it so much. So then we can shift our focus to the music. So that simply requires time and repetition of just playing something over and over. And so if you're trying to do this with a particular song, keep practicing that song, play it over and over again every day and you will get to where you're able to listen while you're playing because you get so comfortable playing it. But depending on where you're at right now, so you could be in that spot where all you need to do is just log more time. Maybe you've got some great coordination going on. You just need to spend more time playing songs, playing along to your favorite record, and just jamming, just having fun, getting more comfortable on your instrument. Maybe that's all you need to do. Check out that video that I mentioned because that's gonna give you some more tips on that. But it's also possible if you're in, in the early stages of drumming, if you feel like your, your feet aren't cooperating, if you feel like 
Right foot is not wanting to lock with right hand. If you feel like you're not able to improvise between kick and snare, if left foot timekeeping is impossible right now, that's okay. Those are things that you need to work on that you do need to eventually master so that you can do this whole listening thing, this whole musical improvisational thing we're getting at today. And so what I wanna do is give you that free guide I mentioned earlier. If you need to work on your coordination, if you know that that's, that's what you need to focus on, I want you to download the free guide because in this guide, I give you very specific coordination exercises. We start off with doing different patterns between hand and foot. And then we talk about doing foot ostinato patterns where our feet, you know, they just play over and over again. Maybe we're playing quarter notes with the feet while we play different patterns with our hands. So we're freeing our hands from our feet. Then we're, we're doing different groove patterns that free the right foot from the right hand. And then we're working on freeing the left foot. We've got these different examples of rock grooves where we're keeping time with the left foot in different ways. And then there's this really cool section where we do full on jazz improvisation, where we learn how to play syncopated, free, just whatever you want them to be, patterns between the kick and the snare. You can do this within a jazz context, even within a Latin context. Very cool stuff. Now this is challenging, and just because you download the guide and you, you take a look at these, it, it's not gonna magically make you better at this. You've gotta take action and you've gotta practice them. But knowing the exact things to practice, that solves all the confusion and all of the frustration of figuring out what you need to practice. It's all figured out for you. I've got it all right here, ready to go. This is the most popular guide we've ever released on this channel. It's helped thousands of drummers because of how specific in detailed yet simple and step-by-step -step and achievable it is. It's helped so many drummers. So join the ranks of your fellow non-glamorous drummers who have gotten a lot of great results from this and built freedom on the kit, helped free their feet, and go download the guide. Total no-brainer. Go work through these because when you do, you're going to broaden your ability. You're gonna free up those pathways in your brain, broaden your ability to be comfortable behind the kit. Remember, coordination means comfort. Build that comfort behind the kit so that you can play musically, so that you can improvise because you're listening. That's when drumming becomes fun. Drumming becomes fun when you're so comfortable playing what you wanna play that you're not having to worry about what you're playing and you're able to listen beyond yourself. That's when creativity happens. That's when creating musical parts happens. That's when playing for the song happens. And that's when you become a professional sounding drummer who sounds good. That's where it all starts. And that's what I want for you. I know that you can achieve this. I hope you believe you can. I know that you can do this. It takes some work. It takes some time. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It does take some time. It takes some work. So you might work at this for a few weeks, a few months, but you will start seeing results. You'll see some results after just a few weeks. I, I can definitely guarantee you that if you work at this. And you'll start to see those ultimate results of feeling free, being able to improvise, maybe after a few months. Different for everybody, but when you work at this, you make progress. So download the guide. It's totally free. It's a no-brainer. You can put it on your iPad, print it out, whatever you want to do. I've had so many students who have this printed out and put in a binder and it's there on their, on their music stand in their practice space and they work this stuff every day and they get great results out of it. So I want that to be you too. Go download the three-part practice routine, know what to practice. So I hope this lesson helps you out. I hope this helps train your ear. I want you to have fun listening to music. So go have fun. Go get the Apple Music trial if you want to. Go listen on Spotify, put on headphones, listen to your favorite songs and have fun just going deeper in your listening. And also check out a recent video I did called the six listen exercise where we go in more detail about how to critically listen. That's something that'll help you out too with that ear training. But most of all, have fun. Have fun listening to music because it's so rewarding and so cool to be able to listen to music in a deep way where you pick up things that a lot of other people aren't picking up. You pick up something new every time you listen to a song and you hear things differently than you've ever heard them before. So go do that. Work on your coordination, download the guide, and you're going to get results. You're going to have more fun on the drums and become a much more capable player. That's what I want for you. I hope that's what you want for you. Know that you can do this. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today and for digging into this lesson. I can't wait to hear how this helps you out. Have a great week, everyone. Stay non-glamorous.